Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude, episode 99. And I've been busy, so uh, what I've been busy doing is taking another class, uh, advanced class in animal training. And I got lots to talk about, but we're going to start with Animal Training 101. Lucy has a different idea, though. What do you think we should start by? Start with Lucy, with honk honk. I'm right here. You want to come over here? Is that what you want? You want to come over here? Well, you can. Do you want to? Want to come over here? Well, if you want to, you can't make up your mind. You gotta walk this way if you want to come over. Do you want to come over? I guess not. Okay. <clears throat> with us today we have Babalu. And we can't have Pippa in the room at the same time. They're getting along fine in the aviary. But this is a dangerous spot for them, and I don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, we have Peaches. Peachy girl. Yeah, it's a peach. Cocoa bird. And if you remember from earlier uh, episodes, she used to cry when she was uh, Are you answering somebody? Yeah, she's answering uh, cause. Cause is crying and she's answering cause. That's Lucy. Lucy, the ever-loving Lucy bird. And we have over here, sugar, sugar bird. Sugar, take a bow, flash a tail, something. And Cecil, who's, yeah, top dog right now. Because he's decided he wants to be top dog. Although they, there's no dominance in parrots, so that's not a dominance position. And hiding in the back is Salamander, who also likes to be called Jabba the Hut. Right, Jabba? Jabba, Jabba. Jabba the Hut. science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it and eventually, if there's enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. The Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success. I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shape. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots, let them roam around about you and share a life with them? Of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. Okay, so I heard on a on a Kiwi podcast, as as in a New Zealand podcast, or you could say a Middle Earth podcast. I'm going to bring her over because she's going to keep that up. She wants to come over, but she's not going to make it obvious. Come on. Come here. Bob, don't get on that side of me. Here we go. Hi. You want to get on me? I know. I can tell. I can tell. That's okay. Silly girl. You're a silly girl. So I heard on a podcast, um, Animal Training Podcast, because I listen to a lot of that kind of stuff. I also listen to podcasts on applied behavior analysis that are for humans, and a lot of that I can move over and, you know, kind of adapt it. And they had Jennifer Zellix. She started training when she was, or learning about training when she was seven or eight years old. And when she started learning, she learned from one of the first people using applied behavior analysis. 
So anyway, I heard her talk, and I said, well, I gotta look into this. And uh, she has an online class. She also has classes you can go and intern at. You can go there and spend a week or more um, interning. You know, intern means you're doing the work, you're learning everything, but you're not getting paid. She has a nonprofit that she runs, and she also works out of a university. She's uh, she has a PhD. Seeing is believing. Here is Jennifer Zellig's training a sea lion. Hello from Animal Training and Research International at Moss Landing Marine Laboratories. Today I'd like to talk to you about an important technique that we use a lot here and it's called targeting. Okay, a lot of people recognize targets in their general sense, which is that you want an animal to touch a specific location that you indicate with a specific part of their body. So that's a nose target and I've now placed it on a remote target and I can pull it back to here. Another property of targets is that the animal continues to, to uh, touch the target until, until you allow them to be released, which I'm doing through a bridge stimulus. People have typically a number of different targets with their animals. They'll have a, a primary target, like a nose target, and then they'll have additional targets, often involving the limbs. Okay, so those are flipper targets. And what we've done here at ATR is we have generalized so many targets on our animals that the animals have learned to be target generalizers. They're master targeters. And that's really cool. We can invent a target any place on the animal's body. So let me show you how that works with Callie. I already showed you here. Dip your face. There you go. Uh, we're on camera. We're on camera. Uh, I already showed you how that worked with the basic targets of Callie. And what I do now that she's had some experience is I can generalize those targets to any specific spot I've identified. So I do that in my world with a, a two finger point. And then I, I operationalize that point and I can move it wherever I want. Good. And she will maintain contact with that point that I've just operationalized so I can create targets on the fly. Let me show you how some of those work. I just did it with an ear point. Good, 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 good. Point, good, hold. Good. So basically she just knows to try to hold that contact. Like, hold, point. <laughs> One of the amusing places to attempt this um, that helped us to develop the, contact, or the concept for, for Callie was on her stomach. Can you roll over? Point. Good. <laughs> good. 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 That one's particularly hard because she has to try to push her body towards the target without really being able to see it. So I think that's quite a good test of concept. So I'm going to work on the fly to see if I can create some different targets on Callie's body to show you how they work. Point. Good. Good. Here's a hard one. Point, point, good, point, point, good! Good! Mm -hmm. So she was thinking about a different behavior for a second there. But then we got it. Good job, that's a hard one, yeah. target in a specific spot. So for example, this front flipper target, flipper, right, flipper, 
right, Finch. That's how she thinks about that target. And it's, it's a basic behavior for her. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, hold. Now I'm gonna try to use this concept to, to create a target on the flipper. Point, good, good, hold, point. Good, 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 that's good. Yes, nice. Beautiful variable flipper targeting. Good job. Point, good, 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 good. Point. So we can use these uh, created targets, instantly created targets, in order to take x-rays, for example, of a specific part of the animal's body, or to build a behavior, like uh, these two targets going together. Um, and a common uh, situation with an x-ray or a medical procedure is that you need to get just a certain angle on that with your apparatus. So having the animal hold that angle is very, very useful for their uh, health and maintenance. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. You wave goodbye. So after a little deliberation, uh, maybe five minutes, uh, of looking at the book that she has, which is Animal Training 101, and looking what the, at what the course was going to teach, I said, I'm doing this. And I don't do anything halfway, so. Uh, in college, they called me CB, as in curve breaker. I would study, and, and I had tremendous study skills I still have, that I still have, and, uh, and try to learn something down to the bone, right? So I thought, I've got problems with Roman. Um, specifically, he, I can't seem to get him outside. I mean, he just freaks out and he wants to run back to his cage. I can take him out, I can trim his beak, I can do his nails, but I knew I needed to have some more skill. And this seemed to be the way to go. And uh, now here's the key. I took Dr. Friedman's course. That's pretty heavy on the academic side, okay? Where Jennifer, Selix, she does more on the actual practice side. Now, she, both of them contain similar information. They're both based on ABA. But, and the Dr. Friedman class was excellent. The LLA class was for giving me a, a grounding and a basis and being able to do functional analysis, which is basically to look at the causes that, that lead to a behavior. But, I saw some of the short videos of what she could do, and I'm saying, boy, ah, this is amazing. And one of the things that, uh, when I first started saying, taking the course, and Brad, who's one of our uh, board members, he's, a, he's an Aussie, he said, well, it's easy for her to train them because they're, they're all focused on her. And, you know, it's true. But... And I pointed out to him, because how would he know, the reason they're focused on her is that she trains calm attention. She trains the default position of an animal to be while it's being trained. Now, keep in mind that whenever you're in the room with an animal, you're tra there's training going on. There's behavior change going on because your behavior is going to affect them, regardless of whether you're in a training session. So the answer to when is training going on is all the time the trainer is in the room with the animal, okay? All the time. But anyway, so what she trains these animals to do, and it's a beautiful song, Peaches. You got another verse? Have you got another verse? Would you like a stick? You want a stick? Well, what do you want? You want to come over here? Well, come on. You want to go on this side? You do? Okay, well, come on over. She wanted something I could tell, but... She likes to sit on this side. Bob, this is going to be Peach's side, okay? Oh, you got to poop? All right, let me get my leg out of the way. He's about ready to go in for another cloacopexy. I'm hoping that it uh, will be another cloacopexy. I don't want him to have to have that big operation because that's the final operation. 
And after that, he's got about three years, maybe, maybe more, maybe a little less. But let's just hope another Colacopex will do it. It's getting close. It's not there yet. So what she does, and you know, it starts off just looking at the animal. The animals, she gets the animal to look at her for about a second, and then good. You know, she gives it that bridge, gives it a reward. Then, you know, builds up over time to where it's two seconds, three seconds. I mean, she's really good about it. It's 1,001, 1,002. All this stuff's coming out. And she has assistants who will count for her, depending on if, if, if there's an assistant there, the assistant will do the counting. Just to make sure you've got it right, because these guys can tell. They can tell when you're going longer than you should be in their minds. So anyway, she teaches calm attention. And so that's their default position. If they're not in, their, in a training session and there's nothing happening at that very moment, they'll be watching her. That's what they've been trained to do. You take this class, you learn how to do it, okay? If you're a lazy person and you're gonna take the class and you're gonna, not gonna take the test at the end, there's a written test, not an easy written test, I'm still going through it. It's open book, but it's open-ended. So, you know, those are the most difficult tests, but you'll really learn if you do it. Then you can also spe specialize, and let's say you want to do work with birds, right? You want a, a certificate. She'll give you a certificate in working with birds, but you've got to do videos showing that you know the techniques and actually show them working, okay? Show that you have mastered them. So, so anyway, she teaches us calm attention. And uh, I'm not going to go into exactly how, this, how all this stuff is taught, because I mean, we're talking hours and hours and hours of video. Uh, one of her lessons is two hours, and I went through, I don't know how many lessons, but it was a lot, okay, so. Which is good, because you learn a lot that way, right? Yeah. The other thing she does, I mean, she, she believes in a relationship bank account, and it's really a good way of looking at it. If you, may, you do something like, he just jumped, and I didn't mean that to happen, okay, if that happens and an animal gets nervous for a second you just withdrew a little bit from that bank account okay so one way to, to add to that bank account every time you see an animal is to come bearing gifts so i do that a lot without even realizing it i come to their cages with something for them that kind of thing so i most of the time i'm coming some bearing some kind of gift even if it's only talking to them sweetly they like to be talked to you know some animals may not matter, but for these guys it does, of course. Hello. Who's down there? What are you doing on the floor? Salamander, come on up. Hi, boy. Hi, Jabba the Hut. So, where was I? She teaches the calm attention, and, and that's the default. And then after that, the next thing you teach is targeting. Because if you want to teach an animal to do something like go around in a circle, it's a lot easier if you can get them to target on something. Now, with some animals, she uses a physical, physical target. Okay, most animals, she uses a physical target and an actual thing like your hand. Like to get him to touch my beak, what I'm planning on doing, targeting, will be to get them to touch my beak. And then I will have a little uh, plaque that they can put their beak on, and that will be the stationary target. So you can get them sit on stationary target, or either follow your hand. So if you wanted to teach, you wanted to teach him to go around in a circle, you could get him on target, and he understands that he's on target, and on target, and target, 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 all the way around until he does the circle. And when he's done that circle, and you reward him for it, of course, with a, with a bridge, you, you say, good, you know. It, so anyway, you're, you get him to go around, you're rewarding them, you're also bridging it. You know, saying good at the very moment where he completes the circle. And then you add the cue to it, which would be circle or cirque or something like that. Whatever, whatever you're going to use for the cue, you want to keep it that same cue from here on out. You can also use a hand cue. Once they're not targeting off your hand, you remove the, the, the target on your hand, right? And they're just doing the circle. Then you could also go like this. You could go circle. So now they have two things. They can see you doing this with your hand, and they can also hear the words. So give them more information is always better. You got to communicate. Now, so, so 
that gives you a little overview of, of the basic first two. But what she teaches is how to communicate, the basics of communication. Okay, she teaches every element of communicating with an animal. And then, then after you learn that, if an animal knows what you want it to do, but doesn't care, has something else in its mind, it's not going to do anything. So you have to communicate what you want them to do and then be sh motivate them to do it. Okay? So first she teaches communication, then she teaches motivation. Okay? So a lot of that motivation is that reward. Okay? Where you're giving a, uh, let's say, this little guy likes papaya, okay? So he does the circle, you give him a little tiny piece of papaya. He does the circle, you give him a little tiny piece of papaya. Now, I'm, truthfully, with a lot of these cockatoos, just petting them is going to be a lot of reward for them. Some of them, will you can be able to train them by just petting them, okay? Because they like that social reward. So the keys here are you, you're, you're, you learn to communicate to make sure they understand. And, and learn to notice when you're not communicating, when they're not getting it. You have to know the difference between an animal that's motivated and an animal that didn't understand what you want. Okay? So you learn how to move forward up to the threshold where it's something that they know. You move forward in that behavior. And then when you come to the part where you're, they're not going to be certain, you slow way down. And you work on it little by little by little by little till you get it. Okay? And then the third part of the class is, talks about desensitization and aggression. So if you're working with an animal, but something's distracting it, if, if he would rather be sitting up there with sugar and I'm trying to get him to do something, the odds on him doing it are pretty small. Okay? So you're going to learn how to desensitize that. Either to make that, make sugar less attractive than what I'm trying to do over here, okay? Or make what I'm doing more attractive than what he wants over there. So you learn how to do that, okay? So now you're learning how to get rid of the distractions, these internal distractions. You know, salamander wants sugar, salamander's not interested in what I'm doing. So you learn how to do that. And that's important too because you can get aggressive, aggressive behavior from not fulfilling what the animal expects. There are a lot of tools that you get. I mean, it's a ton of them. There's six different operant techniques that you learn, okay? And all of those, those, those techniques, well, for example, here's one, is, is mimicry or imitation. You learn how to, well, that's how these guys learn how to talk, right? Whenever Cecil, I get his attention, he's in a calm attention state, I, I recognize it. <laughs> I've learned, learned how to do it, but I haven't practiced yet. I'm trying to get everything lined up so I know exactly what I'm doing as I approach these techniques. But I've caught him in the past, this is scan to capture, but I've caught him paying attention to me. And when he's looking at me with a certain just calm attention, I will say, hello, hello, hello. And then he started going, hello, hello, hello. Now he says hello. Yeah, he says hello, don't you, Cecil? He does. Cecil says hello. Cecil also says hi, and he says Cecil. It's through repetition. Hello. Now this guy, we're talking about just the imitation, right? I come up. I hand, him, I hand him a little bit of peanut butter, he likes peanut butter on a stick, and it doesn't affect his his, his uh, prolapse at all, but I can tell what does is, is, is uh, wheat, and uh, which is funny, because you know, wheat doesn't really affect that many people or animals, but it affects him. So I walk up, I've been walking up for, I don't know, years, I think, but uh, going, I love you, Bob, and handing him something. So all of a sudden I hear him go, I love you, Bob. And that's imitation, okay? If you can get them to give you calm attention and you can repeat something, right? They will eventually pick it up. 
The only thing there, of course, is that you're not going to be rewarding it until they actually say something, so... Where are you going, baby? Where do you want to go? He was over by Bob. He won't like that very much. Where are you trying to go? So anyway, you learn six opera techniques. I'm not going to go through all of them. You learn how to deal with when something goes wrong, when the animal gets something wrong. Um, you learn a couple of ways to do it. Do it. Uh, you learn a couple of ways to deal with it. Um, for example, you learn to uh, do the. Hey, now no, you calm down, Bob. Leave him alone. He's all right. Where are you going? Why oh, you want to go up there? Okay. As long as you don't climb on the other thing. Don't climb on that. Where are you going, Mander, Mander, Mander? Nope, 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 not the door. Excuse me. Get, no. Come here, that's not gonna work. Sit up here. Okay, come here. Come here, little girl. Is that better? Is that better? Okay. Your tail sure looks chewed up. He just manages to bang it on things. I took him to the vet, one of our vets, and we removed a bunch of his feathers. And um, They're growing in really slow, but he keeps damaging them. Yeah, it's, par it's partially because of that uh, twisted pelvis he has. Nice, Cecil, nice. Good boy. Good boy. I hear you, Coco. What's the matter? What you want, Coco? What you want? What you want, Coco? Hmm? What do you want? <coughs> so, one of the things you learned, as I was saying before I was rude, uh, so rudely interrupted <laughs> by, by Jabba the Hutt, um, learn how to catch them when they're doing something wrong. You're trying to teach them a particular behavior and they go off the other way. Especially when it's something they, they almost know. They mostly have down. You learn how to stop that behavior. Have them come over. Okay. And get rewarded for listening to you, correcting them. Okay. And then you can do it over again. Now, if you're doing a, let's say you have a complex behavior or something you're going to have to expend a lot of energy to do. If they're doing it wrong, and they come back to you, okay, and they're expecting a reward, you don't give it to them, uh, you could cause aggression, all right? So she teaches you how to deal with that. Basically, she goes through every possible way you have to can interface with a bird, communicate with them. Of course, she's not giving the birds. Most of the marine mammals are going to be seeing in these videos, but you will see a few birds. Um, but mostly it's marine mammals because that's where she's working these days. Bob, I gotta clean you up. Yeah. Come here, Bob. Let me get your tail. Let me get your tail for you. And it won't be too long before you're back at the vet. Um, It doesn't matter. She could be teaching pandas. It doesn't matter what animal's being trained. The techniques are all the same. She teaches you how to, for example, she teaches you how to, where I was talking about targeting, how to learn, learn how to teach them to target in different parts of their body. So that I'll be able to put like two fingers on her wing and I'll put just one wing out. Or I can put two fingers on her head and get her to follow my fingers. Well, I take my fingers like this and pull them out. She'll follow my fingers around. And with that, you can get them to do all kinds of things. If they needed to go in for x-rays, you could actually get them in that the position they need to be without using uh, anesthesia. And if you think, well, that you couldn't do that. If you think that you couldn't do it, I watched it being done, okay? In the videos, I saw it done. I saw a dentist put 16 shots into a sea lion, sea lion, you know, predator, into a predator's mouth with it wide open and dealing with Jennifer as the trainer and then extract a tooth. 
Okay? I saw that. I saw other medical procedures. I saw I saw her train a sea lion to go in a circle with scan and capture. Scan and capture is where you, you just watch for something to happen, something that you want to happen. If they move just slightly in the direction you want to go, you you bridge it, you say, good. And they run over and you get, you know, get a treat, or in this case, she was tossing fish to the animal, but they get a reward. And you keep doing that a little bit more each time, a little bit more each time. As she said, scan and capture is not the way you want to teach an animal to go around in a circle, but she was showing that you could do it. And she did. She taught that animal to go in a complete circle, just standing there and going, good. And the animal, of course, is moving because it realizes it's, it's focused on her and it's moving, trying to figure out what she wants. And she's communicating with it by just catching that just at the right time. Bob, don't nibble on my... He, t he nips my arm just to get my attention. You silly bird. You silly bird. You're in here. You've been, they were out in the aviary earlier today, so... They seem pretty active for birds that were just out in the aviary for a couple hours. Huh? What peach? What? What peaches? So... There's a class that's definitely worth the money. Um, the class is $400. It'll take you a while to get through it. If you really plug and work hard, uh, you might get through it in a month. I don't think you should go at it any, any uh, faster than that because you have to read the book and then watch the videos and then go back to the book to make sure you got it right. But you still have to take the test and give yourself time on that. Make sure you get it right. Work, work it out in your head. Put down what you think the answers are first. And then go back and look at the book. Um, I would suggest taking notes while you're watching the videos. I didn't. Um, so I had to go back in the videos. Yeah, because there's some things in there that I wanted specifically to, to capture to put into the test. But... It's not a it's not a you know multiple guess test. It's it's a essay test. So, and I know a lot of people are like I don't want to do a test. I don't like to. this is where you learn. This is where you put it all together. You look at that and say, boy, I heard that and I think I know it. What am I missing here? And it helps to sink it all in. And uh, which, since I have so much to do, I haven't gotten through the test yet. I'm only twelve questions in. I'll sit down and do a question or two, and then I have to get up and do other things. But um, I'm looking forward to doing videos on the birds. That's going to be so much fun. I'm going to pick the hardest ones to do these uh, skills with. But so I highly recommend that you, you t if you have a bird, whether or not you're having problems with the bird, uh, if you want to have the best communication, the best relationship you can, I highly recommend you take this course. It's a nonprofit. I'm, I haven't been asked to do this by anyone. I'm not working in association with uh, Animal Training uh, International. Uh, I'm just saying I'm taking it. I paid full price. Okay. Um, by the time you, if you're gonna, if you're going to take the class, you can get the books through there cheaper. So. If you, if you don't have the book, there's also a, a CD, but if you don't have the book, I suggest if you're going to take the class, sign up for the class, and then get the books. It will cost you less. Um, let's see some of the other things that you did in there. Uh, there's one thing you can see on the web. I'll put a link in our show notes, but where these people are standing at this this is she was making a point about not not um, offering an animal something and then not providing it okay you got to be careful you have to fulfill your obligations and uh, but there was a family they were taunting the sea lion a wild sea lion in the ocean okay and um, what they did, you should see the video. If you look up sea, sea Lion Attack on YouTube, you should find it. 
And as it says, you know, girl gets pulled into the ocean there, or gets pulled in. That's what happens. But what they do is they offer it food, and these guys don't eat human food. They eat fish. So the mere fact that this animal was, was paying attention means that it had been through this before. Then they pretended to give it food. <laughs> Not a good idea. Then they taunted it some more. They didn't think they were taunting it. They thought they were just being the usual humans. You know, ha, 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 this is so much fun. Then a little girl sat up on the uh, up on the pier, and the sea lion came up and pulled her in. Right. Nobody got hurt. It was fine. But, I mean, it, she got pulled in, and then they had to go diving in to get the kid out of the water. So Jennifer explains how to avoid that kind of uh, emotional response in animals, how to deal with aggression, how many of the people who, who have contacted me have had issues with aggression, okay? Now, you can pay the money up front or you can pay the money later. You can pay the money for the uh, stitches or you can pay the money to learn. These guys are not by nature. Um, violent at all. If your bird bites you, you did something wrong. And people tell me, well, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, you don't know. You don't know their psychology. Have you studied it? This has got, this has got to be cleaned. Um, you don't know their psychology. Um, you're not able to communicate on a high level with them. Hey, hey, no, no. Salamander. Excuse me, Bob. Get down here for a second. I don't know if he messed up the camera. No. Get away from it. Go on. Get back over here. Get you back over here. Can't play with the camera. What, Coco? You want to come over here? Come on. Alright, sit up here. You can sit down there. You can do it. It won't kill you. It won't kill you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But she gets to sit up here some too. It's all right. It's all right. Don't you try to nip her. It's okay. Yeah, this one right here got real territorial, but she's doing better, aren't you? Coco, hold on. I don't want her biting your tail end. So, as I like to say, you can pay the money up front, but you can pay it later. And the other thing is, you really don't want an animal that you, that you care about. <coughs> you don't want an animal that you care about to... Uh, go bad because of something you did wrong and if you learn how to work with them and these classes you'll really learn how to work with animals if, if you learn these techniques um, you're going to find your life so much better with them and you won't be having to hunt around to try to find answers to, to how to deal with problems and those who don't have any problems with their birds you're just waiting for it to happen sometime it's going to happen Almost invariably, you know. Right, Coco? Right, Coco? So, let me think some of the other videos in there that were... Um, okay, how's this? Hyenas are not exactly friendly animals, okay? So, um, I watched uh, one of her trainees walk up to a, a hyena's cage, pat her neck, and the hyena put its neck up. So she could do an injection. How's that? Um, hi. Hello. Hello, guys. What, Coco? What? You're making a little sound. Well, I'm not petting you fast enough? I'm just not... Hello, Peaches. I'm not petting you fast enough? Hmm? I watched a pigeon get taught to walk around uh, like a little obstacle, okay? Just to go around a circle around an obstacle. I watched it get trained to do that. Hello, Peaches. Hello. And some of the things that I had learned before, I learned better ways of doing them. 
Okay. Um, you may have heard of the bridge, which is basically just not letting. It's a way to let the animal know it's done the right thing. When you can't deliver the reward, the reinforcer, the treat, whatever you want to call it, you can't deliver it at that exact moment. And the reason it has to be done at the exact moment is because whatever it's doing at the moment you give it the reward is what it's going to think it's being rewarded for. How would it know anything different? Think about it. How would it know anything different? Now, one of the games I played um, in the past, and it's done by a lot of trainers, is where you're in a room and somebody, you know, they all get together, have you out of the room, they all get together and decide what you're going to do, and then one of the other persons becomes the trainer and they'll, like, they'll say, good, when you're turning in the right direction. The only thing you have to do is move around a little bit. You just have to move around a little bit. And the other person will, will say, good, when you're moving in the right direction. Like they're trying to try to get you to go over and open the door. And they have to get you to get to the door and open it without using words. And if you ever play that game, you'll find out what it is like to be one of these animals being trained. Because if you say good when they're going the wrong way, that person is going to go the wrong way and keep going the wrong way. And you're going to have to back them off and you're going to only have that one word to say. Right? So... It's a good it's a good exercise, but she gives you a whole bunch of other things you can do to learn these things, to learn what your animals are going through and how to make it better for them. And the entire time during the course, she stressed on how important it is that this be a good experience for the animal and that you don't want to take out of that relationship bank account. You don't want to make a withdrawal unless you have to. Now, if you're going to do a medical procedure... You may have to withdraw something out of the bank account. Um, but there's ways, and she, she, and she goes through it, and, and, and it all makes sense. You'll understand what she's saying, okay? She explains how to prepare the animal for a major event. Um, she showed us how a sea lamb was prepared to go and get surgery. You know, how it was taught to get into an anesthesia cone. Um, how it was taught to be able to get into the, the, the scene that would hold it while it was being transported. The whole thing. How it was prepared for transportation by being out, taken out and transported, you know, bef long before the surgery was due. Um, so what you'll learn by taking the course is the best way to deal with animals in such a way that you're always thinking of their, me their needs first and you're protecting them and anyone else who's around them. Yeah, isn't that right, Coco? Isn't that right, Coco? Hmm? And it's fun. At the beginning of each lesson, she always has a, you know, Come, bringing, come bearing gifts, so she always has something fun to watch and uh, something to, to make you feel good about taking the lesson. And to point out, she uses the techniques on us while we're taking the class so that we will be happy when we're done with it. The thing about taking a class like this after you've been working with animals so long is that it is hard to change the way you do things. So you're going to have to develop new habits. And so I started out that process when I'm working on their nails, because I do one bird's nails every day. I used to do like all of them in one day. That's just a real pain. So I do one bird's nails a, a day. And so what I, and, and that has other advantages too, okay? Since I leave that equipment out and someone like Cecil gets all freaked out when he sees that equipment. He'll let me do it, but it takes a while. He flies away, goes back, flies away. I bring him back, flies away, and finally he sits there and just puts his foot out and lets me do it. But now when he comes in to get sprayed every morning, I take him in the kitchen and the, the nail station is set up and he sees it. But we walk right by it, he gets sprayed, like I do every morning, and then I walk, walk him out of there. And at first, when I was doing that, he was trying to fly away. Now, 
We go in, we walk out, he's desensitized to the fact that that's out because it only happens twice a month that he actually gets his nails done. Where did I learn that? Hmm. But blending these things in and breaking my habits, okay, example, I've always used a single bridge, which has always been good for it, okay, or good girl, I'll say good boy. So now I'm changing, I'm going to use the one she does, and she uses it in two ways. There's the good, good, okay, which, which she will use while the animal's in process of learning something before it gets to the point where you would reward it. She, it's, it's called an intermediate bridge. She'll use it like that, and then when she gets to where it, that's it, we're done, we're, with this is the end, she uses the final bridge, which is just good, okay, which is, she, by increasing the, the volume, increasing the, the tone of the sound, they understand that they got it, that's where the reward's coming. Um, there's a lot more than this, though, I'm telling you guys. So I have to go through and change these different ways I approach things. I have to establish a training uh, regimen. She tells you how to do it. Tells you how to make the sheets, how to, how to you know, line up what they're going to do and mark it off and that kind of thing. So they're all going to go on a regimen. They're all going to start learning new things, calm attention and targeting the way she teaches it. And... Uh, I mean, this could go on for years if I live that long. You know, I'm not getting any younger. Nobody is. Right, Coco? Right, Coco? Aw, oh, Coco. There's that Coco face. They can't see that Coco face. Maybe that camera can. That Coco face. That's the, you just aren't petting me quite enough. I want to get petted more. Yeah, that's the Coco face. I know. You're a good girl, though, Coco. You are. You're a good girl. So I have to I have to change that around. I, there's a couple of things that she taught about how to how to let an animal know that it's not doing something right. Um, I have to practice those. A lot of little things I need to practice. <clears throat> And uh, I created a mind map where I'm putting all the training tools, all the ideas on one mind map so I can follow it through. And then I'm going to take each bird and run them through, you know. Obviously, I can't do every bird every day, but every third day I'll put them in the training. The reason I have to do that is just take 13 and add 10 minutes per bird. That's 130 minutes. You know, not counting the getting to the location. So, um, you're talking about three hours a day that I don't have, but I can fit in an extra 20 minutes every day, one way or another, to train one bird or two birds. It'd be a half an hour to train two birds. Maybe less. But check it out. You can go on our website, and I'll put the link in the, um, I'll put the link in our show notes, but you can go on the website, take the first couple of classes for free, get an idea of what's going on, what it's about, and decide if you want to do it. Um, if there's one weakness I've seen in people who have parrots is their knowledge of the species, which you're not going to get from this class, that would be from the Manual of Parrot Behavior. That's the best place to get a knowledge of these guys. Um, and the ability to train. Now, my training skills were pretty good, but they're about to get a big boost. A <laughs> big boost. Because I've seen the value of what she does. I know how to do it. Um, I just need to line it up and plan it out so I can approach each bird. Now, some birds may learn one thing after another. Calm attention and targeting are the, my, my top two, though. The two targets. The stationary target and the hand target. I could, you can use these little targets that have a little ball on the end. The problem is you got to carry them around with you. So it's like, well, I don't have my target. Use your hands, you know. It's like clickers. People talk about clicker training. First of all, I wouldn't use a clicker training around a, an African gray, would you? All you're going to hear all day long is click, 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 because it'll pick it up really fast, and that'll be the end of that. Every bird's going to hear the clicker going off all the time. 
So you don't want to do that. So using vocal cues is far better. But you'll understand the you'll understand the logic, the reason you're doing what you're doing. You'll get you'll get a solid grounding in the reasons for and the methodology of training. And what she does best is teach you how to do the art, to actually be able to train animals. And uh, it's not as much focused on academics. She does cover it as much as you need, them, but uh, she covers what what you need to really work with with animals. And that's what she does all the time. And she trains trainers. That's that's part of her job. She trains animals and trains trainers every day and has been doing this for a long time. So please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Chloe Sanctuary. Become a patron. Give us a dollar an episode, please. It's not easy to do this stuff. And uh, I remember one lady I saw on Facebook, she goes, well, you could go out to to what Don's putting out there and he gives all that stuff away for free. Well, yeah, I want everybody to know it, but we could use a little help, folks. So if you can afford uh, a coffee at Starbucks once a week, a couple of dollars a month isn't gonna hurt you and we, we, we need it. Lucy just said, I need it. That's what Lucy said, I need it. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you become a Patreon supporter. Um, we also thank everybody who gives us our, their donations through PayPal. And if you contact me after you've given a, uh, a, a donation of at least $25 on, on PayPal, I'll get let you get into uh, the private files and see all the full videos that are for the, for the supporters. So, because you're a supporter too if you do that, right? Yeah. It's just a little harder for me to track those guys. So you have to let me know, okay? If you've given us money and you didn't get that. The other thing, too, is we have a workplace. And if you're a supporter, if you're somebody who's financially supporting us, then you're on the board of advisors and you are allowed to go in there. And we have a lot of cool stuff going on. A lot of files I'm sure you will find useful um, that you can download. Pictures and we talk about what's coming up. It's been a little quiet there this last month because I've been doing this course. But... Going to be a lot of fun stuff coming on our Patreon site because I'm going to be putting up some of the videos that I'm going to be doing for my final. And you guys can see what I'm doing. So, Okay. Who wants to say goodbye? Coco, you just want me to pet you. You want to say goodbye? Lucy? No. Whoa. Sugar, you want to say goodbye? Sugar? You want to say goodbye? No? Okay, guys. Peaches can say goodbye. Peaches? Come on, Peaches. You want to say goodbye to the, to the people? Say goodbye to the people? Peaches? 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 Peach, 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 peach. Peaches? I can't get you to sing, can I? There you go. Say goodbye. Hello, Peach. I love you. Hello. Hello, I love you, Peaches. Well, I guess Cecil said his goodbyes. Okay, folks, we'll see you next time for episode 100 coming up. We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org Reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. So science knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower.